Shooting it raw? Yes. Shooting it raw. <laughs> Hamburger and fries. Okay, this is great. Okay, so it's a photo of, I guess it's a, a shot of, from your, from your book, I guess, I'm assuming. So it says ham, ham hyphen burger and fries. Uh, it says each serving carbon, calories, protein, fat, carbs. Serves for prep time 15 minutes, cooking time 30 minutes. I love food. I love cookbooks. I love what you've done. Okay, take it away. Great, great photo. First off, do you like the photo? Okay, so one of the things about, okay, so I, I am somehow connected to one of the, like the top food photographers in Canada or something like that, <clears throat> or, or yeah, like something weird. And I also know by watching, you know, food porn on TV that, you know, it's like, it's a lot of effort to get the right photo and all this stuff. It's a great shot. It's a great shot. It's, it's uh, you know, it's very saturated. It's, um, it looks very appetizing and it looks very kind of, you know, it doesn't look healthy. It looks decadent. It looks tasty. It looks like, you know, I mean, I, first of all, I love all food and this is just burger and fries. I love it. Yeah. So burger and fries, you know, who doesn't love burger and fries, right? And yeah, hamburger. I've never actually, until I looked at this dish, never questioned why hamburgers are called hamburgers because um, they're made from beef, right? <laughs> but it's because they come from Hamburg in Germany originally. Right. Um, so you, your good old American hamburger is German. Yeah. And the fries are obviously French. But <laughs> the, so the, you know, the challenge is obviously here, well, we can't be using beef because we've seen the enormous omissions yep. for beef. Um, so your obvious substitute here is pork, but you're going from red meat to white meat. So, you know, whilst I think burgers made from pork taste pretty much just as good as beef burgers you don't get okay. that visual like red meat like you know dripping kind of burger mm -hmm. look um so all i did was added some in the recipe grated beetroot which is actually amazing because okay. it gives you that real red deep red hue uh and it also mm -hmm. keeps it super moist the burger so you can you know, cook it so you're less concerned when you're cooking it about it drying out that beetroot mm -hmm. moist a bit of paprika as well so you give it that sort of earthy hit that red coloration um, you know it looks like a like a, a juicy beef burger mm -hmm. so these are just like little little cooking hacks that can you can swap that ingredient for something that's way better for the planet but it's going to taste and look just as good if not better so that's what these recipes are all about i think the picture's got the has it got the label on there so for each serving, we give the carbon, the calories, protein, fat, and carbs. Yeah. So you can see what you know what mix of macronutrients you're eating. Remember, you want to be about 10% protein, majority carbs, 20-30% fat. Calories. Again, you know it's important not to overeat. Um, so all the recipes are for a main meal less than 800 calories, which is you know the recommended intake. And then the carbon. So this is 560 grams of carbon which is 90% lower than if you made it out of beef. So it's a massive, massive difference. Right. Now, this carbon is the carbon emission. Carbon emissions, yeah. Because, you know, a carbohydrate is carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So, okay, yeah. so just to separate that the car carbon is definitely the, the carbon emission. Yes, Okay. So yeah, at the end of every recipe, we'll just we just say, for instance, this one says, the same serving size has a whopper, excuse the pun, ninety percent lower carbon footprint, twenty percent fewer calories, forty percent less fat than the equivalent beef burger recipe. Wicked. So you know instantly the impact of just this one ingredient swap, a couple of little ingredient tweaks, delicious meal, better for you, better for the planet. And that was the idea. That's great. Okay, so um, I can't remember if the last time we spoke was over a year ago. Like, how long did it take for you to kind of put this book together and publish it? Like, yeah, it's probably been about nine months. Yeah, so okay. I, 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 you know, so I started off with all the original recipes of just the world's favorite dishes. Mm -hmm. So we got, you know, load, uh, read you a few of them. We've got, you know classic dishes things like you know spaghetti bolognese um we've got 
loads of soups in there, starters, piri piri chicken, carbonara, pasta bake, cassoulet, moussaka, loads of curries, fakeaways, so things like chow mein, kung pao, gyros, risottos, uh, bibimbaps. So we've got, we got, you know, loads of staples and great foods in there. Sorry, I have to jump in. Your... You you sound like an engineer, like and, and I'm, not, I'm not saying this is as an insult at all, right? Like it's in the sense yeah. of you're deconstructing the problem, and you're coming at it from a, a sort of a different perspective, right? You're just like, okay, well, let's look at this food thing, and then how yeah. can I, how can I tackle this this problem or this 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 topic in a way that has more appeal, I guess, or a wider audience? Yeah. <laughs> so why don't you talk about the, the intellectual process of getting to writing a cookbook as a kind of as a as a tool as a solution right like as a as a as an engineered solution yeah well it, i mean it was exactly because of you know my failed attempt to go vegan or vegetarian you know because if you want to do this really simply go vegan or vegetarian right that's you're going to mm-hmm. win every time on carbon emissions uh despite okay. what people say about almonds or avocados Right, right. If you eat mainly vegetables, then you're going to have it's a huge. Good diet for the planet. Yeah, it's huge. It's huge. There's no denying that. Yeah. Uh, but I failed at that. And I thought, well, is there a way? And, and there are lots of other people out there who, yes, they care about climate change. They care about sustainability. They care about the planet. But they're just, you know, we're wed in our ways and we are used to eating what we eat. And they don't care maybe enough to 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 go vegetarian because it's such a big change and it, it's a big cultural well, change yeah there's that for sure um so yeah i i wanted to I, wa- I wanted to see well how do we create change in those people which are you remember 90 percent of the world you know 10 percent of the planet are vegetarian less than one mm-hmm. percent are vegan the other 90 mm-hmm. percent or so are eat meat yeah you know, can we sort of demonstrate how to eat meat better rather than yeah. tell them how to eat meat better demonstrate it through things that they love to eat and yeah so the, the process the, the process was literally taking a list of all of everyone's favorite dishes putting up the the, the standardized recipes for them uh, in a in a database mm-hmm. figuring out what all the emissions and the calories and the the the, the macronutrients were and then going through and doing these ingredient swaps, you know, using what I know about the carbon emissions of different foods from a big old database and figuring mm-hmm. out how we were going to make these dishes lower carbon, taste just as good, if not better. That's and that was it. fantastic. That's fantastic. It's also very delicate because, you know, what people eat, it's like raising children, you know, it's like when you come in and you start telling people how to live their lives, you know, some people respond very defensively. But I, I have you done a survey of how many books out there tackle this problem in this particular way? I mean, have like, are there other books like this? There aren't any, yeah. So there's, there are some, you know, cooking for climate change books out there. There's a handful, mm-hmm. but they're all basically vegan or vegetarian cookbook right um with some good stuff in there about buying seasonally and locally and things like that the um oh, there's a really good one i've forgotten the name now though uh, what's it called fork ranger i would recommend that okay book. um they do a great job and they've got like an app and a seasonal calendar and they have, have a couple one or two recipes with a little bit of meat in like mm-hmm. more as a sort of flavor enhancer which i you know i like the idea of that but there's nothing out there which has actual meat dishes, but also sure. looking to be low carbon. So I thought I'd write one. <laughs> See if of course. And because people forget really quickly, what's the name of your book again? <laughs> Climate Change Kitchen. Kitchen. 100%. Climate <laughs> Change easy, Kitchen. That's an easy one to remember. But um, yeah. Yeah, so it was just a journey to see if it was doable and see if I could put the book together and see if I could take some photos and do all that aspect of it, which is great fun. 
Okay, so look, as as a let's let's shift gears to that then. Okay, so suddenly you're like as part of the development to kind of you've all you, all, you had already written a book, so you kind of went through that process. But then for this book, you're like, okay, I need new skills, which is the photography. So, what was the learning curve for for like for somebody who's never done um, food photography? How would you describe that challenge of food photography? Um. Yeah, it's difficult. I, I, there's a load of great, like, you know, I, I read around it. You know, I'm a books guy, so I bought some mm-hmm. books on food photography and, um, you know, how to set up light boxes and get the angle of the nice. light right, depending on whether you want the you know, the shine coming off some soup or, you know, what the you know, color um, coordination is on the sort of setting that you've you've put in place and what the background mm-hmm. look like, things like that. So that all that aspect of it, I, I, I found... Yeah, it's good. It's it interesting. And I found, you know, you take enough shots, you go through all of them. You know, a few of them are going to visually catch your eye and say, yeah, I've, yep. I've got that right. Um, so don't be afraid just to take tons and tons of pictures is what I learned. Uh, what I didn't learn. It's like writing. Yeah. It's a, it's a lot of editing. It's a lot of editing. Uh, what I didn't realize was the importance of the angle of the food. Or the, or the subtle mm-hmm. angles when you take it. So, so I was you know, if I'm taking straight down shots of a circular plate, let's say, in my mind I'm like, well, it doesn't matter whether I'm taking this, uh, you know, landscape or portrait. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be able to rotate this after, and I can fit it onto the page how I want to structure the the layout. Yeah. And then you do that, and you're like, okay, I, I took it landscape but now i want it portrait to make a full page and you mm. look at it and you're like well something's not something's off and it's just those subtle angles of how you take the picture which are embedded in the picture which you couldn't tell if you're looking at it on a computer probably uh, or mm-hmm. a screen of camera but once you get it laid out into your book you're just looking and you're like well for some reason that looks like it's upside down or you know on, on its side uh, okay, even okay. though there's even though there's no visual cue per se that would say that it is there's just something wrong with it so right. that, that's a mistake that i made through a lot of the photography uh, in that i should have thought of the about the layout of the book and the angles at which i took the photo yeah. before um, I thought I'm just going to take these from different angles and then we'll uh, we'll make it fit. But yeah, that that was the, that was really the trickiest part for me. Okay, well, as you're saying this, I've got this photo of a really nice looking um, burger and fries. So let's move on to the next photo. So is life really a gift? Really? Can you make every second count? That's the whole point of the podcast. So if you like what you've seen and you're inspired, because that really is my mission, then please give it a like, subscribe, and share. Shooting it raw? Yes. Shooting.